everybody, uh, I'm Josh Castleberry, owner and operator of Castle Coffee in downtown Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, today is a, another one of our brew series that we've been doing. Uh, you know, just trying to trying to get uh, a handle on and get familiar with um, a bunch of different brew methods. Um, whether you're thinking about expanding your uh, your brewers at home or you have nothing and you're trying to figure out where you want to start, um, there's a, a lot of really good brewers uh, in this brew series. Um, and today's brewer is actually one that I think is one of the most underrated brewers uh, in terms of uh, how easy it is to use and how the the coffee itself is is probably one of the most like full bodied. Uh, most flavorful cups uh, out of all the brew methods that I actually really enjoy and I don't think we use enough in the craft coffee industry um, but it's called the clever dripper um, it's it is one of the full immersion brew methods uh, as we if you follow along in the series uh, there's the AeroPress there's the French press um, and the clever dripper those are the the most commonly used um, kind of full immersion brewers that you'll find um, and this one is a really really uh, really cool take on it um, because it is a full immersion um, but it uses a paper filter um, and so if you kind of looked at our french press one you saw that um, we kind of had to hack quote unquote the french press by using a cloth uh, tea bag filter um, to be able to make a full body brew without all the fines and, and the kind of sludge that comes with full immersion brews um, the clever was made uh, with a paper filter in mind to catch all of those oils all those fines and so at your end of your cup you have a full bodied um, cup of coffee because of the immersion brew but you don't have any of the fines or sludge uh, at the bottom of your cup uh, due to that paper filter um, which i really love i really appreciate um, and i've made some of my favorite cups of coffee have actually been on this clever dripper um, and so when you get a clever um, they actually do come in two different sizes um, this uh, this one's the bigger version and this is the one that i would actually recommend um, is the one that actually holds a lot more liquid this is a full 12 ounce cup of coffee the smaller one only makes an eight ounce cup um, so you know obviously dealer's choice but um, i i like the 12 ounce one because i do like to drink a full 12 ounce cup of coffee um, so in terms of your tools that you'll need for this brew method you'll need your burr grinder um, again as i've said in other videos you can use a hand you can use an electric uh, burr grinder um, but i will say that if you are using a blade grinder um, and uh, you have the means to upgrade i would definitely if you're going to upgrade anything in your system it's going to be to a burr grinder um, the burr grinders uh, have two uh, burrs that work against each other that actually create a really consistent um, grind particle size um, so you want to use your burr grinder, you want to use a kettle, either gooseneck or tea um, kettle spout with the bigger spout there. Um, either one works with these full immersion brew methods. Um, you're going to want your coffee, your cup, your filter, and then this is the, one of the only ones you'll need a, a spoon with or some, some something to stir with. Um, and, and this is like one of the only brewers that you actually need kind of an extra piece of equipment for, this one in the AeroPress. But um, what we're going to start off with um, is we actually do a, a 1 and a near 14 ratio. It's in between a 13-14. Um, and it's uh, we do 26 grams in to 360 grams out. Um, so uh, for this one, if you've watched our V60 or any of the other kind of um, fresh pour, slow pour methods, um, we do a one in uh, 14 in that one. Um, this one's going to be just a tad stronger, so it's uh, so a little more coffee. And I think because of the full immersion, I, I tend to like um, just a little more body in there, um, so a little bit more coffee. So um, we use 26 grams in, 360 grams out. Um, and it's right in between that 1 and 13, 1 and 14 um, brew ratio there. Um, and this one, it's, it's going, you're going to want to have a, uh, a, a more um, coarse grind setting. Um, not as like coarse as a French press, um, but you, uh, you do want to be a little bit on the coarser side um, because you're, you're what's called the drawdown, um, as you'll see what's special about the Clever Dripper, is there's actually a, a release valve on the bottom. So you brew the entire brew standing up like this. But then when you're ready to, um, to actually brew your coffee, you're going to put it on top of the, the cup and the drawdown is what's going to um, you know, open up that valve and the water is going to come down. If that's too fine, you're actually going to cause it to clog and it's not going to be able to drain quick enough. So you want it to be coarser, coarse enough that it's not going to clog when it comes down, but not too coarse that it just flushes down and you're going to get an under extracted cup of coffee. Um, so, and you'll kind of have to play with that on what works best for you. Um, but I would say that uh, you would want to be around the medium, like go halfway on your grinder and then go a little coarser than that. Um, and that will kind of give you a good starting point. Um, so yeah, so we're going to start off with grinding our coffee. And today we're actually going to be using our uh, Thermic Shocked Natural Costa Rica. Um, a lot of um, fancy words, but it's a, one of our farmers is using uh, a really cool method of um, heating the cherries uh, pre being um, depulped. 
Um, he kind of caramelizes the sugars within the cherry and then leads them out on these uh, kind of massive uh, like uh, tarps to dry um, for a few weeks. Um, and that's called natural processed. Um, but that thermic shock beforehand creates a really, really cool kind of fermented strawberry taste. Um, it's really funky. So this is like one of our, our more unique coffees. Um, and it's really, we have a lot of all that information on our website. If you are interested in what any of that means, um, we go way deeper on our website um, because we think it's really cool what, what the farmer is doing down in Costa Rica. Um, but this is available online or in store. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to measure out that 26 grams. And like I said, we're going to go on the little bit coarser, um, medium coarse grind setting here. And go ahead and grind that. Okay, and once it's done grinding, um, your Clever Dripper is gonna come with a little, uh, it comes with a lid and a little uh, piece to put it on. You don't have to put it on this because the Clever Dripper does have these little knobs here that keep it elevated. Um, but I just like to put it on there just in case there's some drips. Um, I would say out of all the brews I do, there's never been a drip, but part of me just really likes to put it on the, um, just in case there ever is a little problem with that. Um, what you're gonna do is the filter here is a flat bottom filter. So if you watch our V60, uh, video it's kind of very similar to that um, so where you you're gonna fold along the perforated side here you're gonna fold along that side but then with the added step on this one is you're also gonna fold that bottom perforation so when you fold the side there's still the bottom here you want to fold that as well and then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna kind of push the perforated side up against the non perforated side just a little bit to keep it open like that because you want it to be able to stay open so you're gonna push that into your filter here and as with any or into your brewer sorry as with any um, brewer that has a paper filter um, you're going to want to pre-wet that paper filter and this is to get all that paper taste out and once you uh, do pre-wet it you are gonna and this is pretty uh, you need like pretty important uh, once you do pre-wet that filter you are going to want to drop it on top of um, your cup to get all of that water once you pour it in there because of that stopper it does keep that water in there. So when you pre-wet that, that filter, the water doesn't just go away. You do have to release that from the actual cup. And you'll see even when I pour it out there, there's some that comes through there. So I usually, yeah, I usually get the stopper to, um, to release that water there and then I'll pour it just to get that last little bit out. So I'm gonna dump that water, put it back onto my scale. I'm going to tear my scale Gonna take my coffee and you're gonna pour it in there um, and it's going, you're gonna get to, yeah, 26 grams. So we're just gonna pour it in there. Once I get 26. And I'm going to shake it just so that it creates an even um, bed, uh, coffee bed. Um, you don't want it to be um, kind of higher on one side or inconsistent because um, you want the extraction to be as consistent as possible on a flat coffee bed there. So I shake it so that all the coffee lays flat the lid actually i'd never use the lid um, so i just keep it aside um, i keep it open like this i'm going to tear my scale one more time and i'm going to take my coffee and with this brew method and this is the only one that we don't do this with we actually don't bloom the coffee um, there i've tried it both ways and i actually prefer this brew method with no bloom um, it's almost like uh, and you can look deeper into this as well if you'd like but it's kind of like cupping um, when you see uh, like uh, people in the industry that they do cuppings uh, in those like porcelain bowls and then they take a spoon and they slurp the coffee um, to get all those flavor notes that you see on bags. This is kind of a bigger version of that. And when they do cuppings, they actually don't bloom either. Um, and I do feel like it really creates uh, a, like my favorite kind of uh, flavor profile in this brew method without a bloom. So just kind of a side note there. But um, you're gonna take your kettle, you're going to start the timer and I'm just gonna keep pouring in circles until I reach 360 grams. So again, no bloom. We're literally just gonna pour until I get to 360. I'm just gonna keep going in circles from the inside out and then outside in. Um, and that's just to get every single ground in here completely saturated. And so you just keep doing that. Um, again, if you don't have a gooseneck kettle, the water will come out a lot quicker. Um, just try to keep going in circles just to get everything um, ex like completely saturated. You don't want there to be pockets of coffee that didn't get wet um, that will affect your final brew. 
But with the gooseneck, because I can control that flow rate, I'm just gonna be going from the inside out, outside in, until I reach 360. Almost there. 360. Okay, and then um, once that's at this point, um, you do wait uh, for the brew to hit two minutes. Um, and once it hits two minutes, um, that's why you need your spoon here, is you're gonna take your spoon and you're gonna actually break the crust. Um, you'll see as, the, as it continues along its brew session, when it reaches, um, when, as it gets closer and closer to two minutes, you'll see the coffee on the top just kind of like sit, it'll, it'll kind of grow a little bit and like almost look like it's like hard almost. It's obviously it's completely saturated, but it kind of looks like the top is, uh, like all the coffee had floated to the top. So what we're gonna do with your spoon is you're gonna break that up and you're going to, all the beans are gonna drop to the bottom. Um, and it's, it's gonna actually help with the extraction and, and flavor um, profile of your coffee when you break that top crust. Um, I have tried it both ways and it is actually pretty crazy how much of a difference it makes in the end flavor of the cup. Just kind of stir, you wanna break that crust and stir um, just so that it, it all flows to the bottom. So it does make a difference. Um, and I've, I've tried it may, probably four or five times in different methods and this does make the biggest difference. So once I do that, I'm gonna kind of push down and stir. You'll kind of see from one of the camera angles that I am pushing down and just kind of rotating it going back and forth. And then at this point, you're gonna wait. Um, after we do that two minutes, you're gonna wait till two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, so all the coffee has time to go to the bottom. And at two minutes and 30 seconds is when you take your Clever Dripper and put it on your cup and let it do the drawdown. Um, and that should take a minute and a half. So we're at 2.30 here. So I'm gonna take my Clever, put it on top. It's all gonna be draining. And, um, kind of an idea of your grind setting um, is if your drawdown, um, again, as I said, kind of in the beginning, if your drawdown takes way too long, um, you're gonna want to coarsen it. Um, so if I put it on there, our end time that we're aiming for is around four minutes. Um, so if, if we're finishing longer than four minutes, um, that means that our grind was too fine and we're gonna wanna coarsen it up for the next time. And on the other side of things, if we do the drawdown and it's happening way too fast, um, it means that it was too coarse and we're gonna need to find that up because we're aiming for around four minutes. Um, I feel like that is, uh, it's a little longer for single cup brew methods, um, but uh, for the Clever, it is like the perfect time frame for the most beautiful full body cup of coffee. Like I said, that you can really have. Um, I, at, when I'm at home, I either use a V60 or this, um, and this is by far one of my favorite brew methods. Um, and so we're getting close to the end here. Um, this, uh, it, we're around like 340 right now. Um, and this last little bit does take a little bit to come down. Um, and uh, you'll see when the, when you'll see the grinds, the water comes down and the bed is completely dry. That's when it's done and you can take it off. And that's kind of what you want to judge your, uh, your final time by um, is when all the water's gone down and the bed is completely dry. So we're at 350 and the bed is almost dry. This is going to be perfect. Four minutes and we have no... Uh, the bed is completely dry, all the water is drained. And I'm gonna throw that away. And I do just kind of, just for good measure, you'll see actually some come out. I'll just pour a little bit. There's just a little bit that gets stuck in the bottom there. But at the end of that, you have your full 12 ounce cup of coffee. Um, it's gonna be super full bodied, very flavorful. Um, and again, just kind of adjust um, your, your grind sizes depending on when you finish. Um, and then the last thing you can do um, to kind of make easy changes is uh, if you taste this and that one in between that one and 13 and 14 is too strong, then you can actually up the ratio, uh, make it lighter, lighter bodied. So um, that one in 14, um, all that means is one gram of coffee to 13 or 14 grams of water. Uh, so what we do is we take 360 grams, which is this full 12 ounce cup. We divide it by the 13 and that gives us 26. Um, so that's how I knew how to put 26 grams of coffee in that grinder is because of that, the ratio. And so if it's too heavy for you, then you can do a one in 15, one in 16 rate ratio. And all you do is take that final 360, divide it by 15, divide it by 16, and whatever number that equals is, you, is how much to know how much coffee to put in there. And that'll be lighter bodied. And so on the other side of things, if you taste it and it's um, way, way too light, um, you're like, man, this needs more body, uh, then, then you just need to up that ratio or add more coffee. Um, so instead of a one in 13, try a one in 12, one in 11. 
um, and, and see how that affects it. Um, but mouthfeel, strength, um, that all uh, can be changed. And, and the fun thing about coffee is at home is that you can control all of that. And that's why I think coffee is beautiful. Um, and, uh, but what we like is the one in 13, and, and this is uh, a really, really good cup of coffee. Um, so yeah, so if you guys are looking to upgrade, like I said, or um, you have a clever and you've been struggling how to dial in, I hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, um, please email us, castlecoffeecoabq at gmail.com. Uh, email us uh, or DM us on Instagram or even contact us on our website or comments on our YouTube channel. Uh, we just want to be here for you guys and, and be a, a reference for information for you. So appreciate you all so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.